Hello filmmakers! In May 2019, I published this video explaining why I switched from Premiere to Resolve. Now, many of you have asked me how I made this intro, which was quite challenging to make. Before we dive into it, I'd like to begin by quickly answering the three questions I got asked most. Uh, the first question was, which software did you use for the intro? Uh, well, I used After Effects for the intro part, uh, and I edited the rest of the video in Resolve. The sound design and mix of the intro was also done in Resolve. Second question, how much time did it take you? Uh, well, it took three weeks, I think, full time, including 10 days just for the intro. And lastly, how much have you been paid by Blackmagic to make this video? Well, zero dollar. Uh, no one at Blackmagic ever asked me to make this video, and they didn't get to see the video or the script before it was published. So just as any other videos on my channel, uh, this was my honest personal opinion. So enough talking, let's now go through the seven steps of the creation process for this intro. Before starting the actual work, I spent a few days doing literally nothing, uh, just thinking about the best possible way I could illustrate that struggle of getting back and forth between different video editing softwares, and how I managed to solve it with this all-in-one resolve solution. I came up with this simple sentence. Once I was happy with the structure, it was uh, time to draft a rough storyboard of how I could visually illustrate that force that pulls you back and forth between the two softwares. Please forgive my drawing skills, this was quite sketchy. Uh, but I hope you get the final idea, which was to throw the bits of footage from software to software in 3D space. Now the idea looked very cool on paper and I was really pumped by it, but I also feared the complexity of the task as I didn't have any budget to pay a professional 3D artist to do it. And that's when I thought, hmm, there's gonna be lots of After Effects and sleepless nights in the coming days. So I tried not to overthink and to just uh, dive into it and get started. So I started to make a timeline in Premiere, take a 4K screenshot of that and import it in Resolve and take another screenshot of that same timeline. Then I started cutting bits of timeline into separate Photoshop layers and import the Photoshop files into After Effects. I wanted to make sure whether it was actually possible to build this ambitious intro or not. So first I tried to animate all of these pieces in 3D space one by one, keyframe by keyframe, but the result wasn't great, and I quickly gave up on the process since it would require thousands of keyframes to animate hand by hand, and I'm not really Mr. Beast. So I started to look for a solution that would automate this, and I came across this plugin that is called Wind. Uh, what wind basically does is simulate a wind force and you can specify its strength, direction, power, character that would then catapult the layers in 3D space. Um, after a bit of testing, the playback remained quite smooth and my computer managed to handle the processing without too much slowdown. The crazy intro now looked within technical reach, so it was time to start the project for real. The first step in creating the intro was to lock the timing of the whole animation. Uh, here it was clear that the script would act as the master clock of the sequence. So I started by shooting the talking head sequence of that script a sentence we saw at the beginning and acting as best as I could. The next very important part was finding an appropriate music track. Uh, it's kind of a second clock for the whole action. And actually, I almost always start looking for the music before I even start the editing. Um, music is so important for me. Uh, too bad I don't have any partnership with Artlist. It would be a perfect spot to promote it, like right there. Searching for music for your next video? Once the live action and the music were locked, I could then proceed to the bulk of the VFX work. Once I was done cutting all the bits and pieces of the Resolve and Premiere timeline in Photoshop, it was time to bring that together with the live action. Uh, having the live footage and music imported in After Effects allowed me to position time markers precisely. Now what are time markers? I put these markers to remind me where I should position key stages of the action, such as the transitions from one software to another or the final timeline explosion. This way I could start making a first draft, position 
mentioning the different key scenes and uh, camera moves in 3D space without any other special effects yet. Uh, once the camera moves were final, it was time to add the rest and all the little pieces in 3D space. Unfortunately, when I started importing all the bits and pieces from Photoshop, uh, that's when many problems started to arise. When looking at how many bits of footage are required for a single catapult sequence, I ended up stacking hundreds of animated 4K layers on my computer. And as powerful as it is, uh, it did not appreciate that at all. So I decided to make layers that would be the size of each bit of footage to reduce the stress on the CPU. Um, I used a script that cut my my Photoshop layers into small PNG files, so now my files were all much smaller and had uh, lower resolutions, uh, so it was more practical to work with them. Next, I made some parallax effect by spreading all the bits along the Z axis. Then I applied the wind plugin I talked about earlier in the video on all these little pieces, testing all the different types of forces and tuning the plugin. I didn't end up with a total of around 500 layers, but the computer managed to handle it pretty well, albeit not by far. When the core of the animation was finished, uh, things started to get easier. That's when I started to add additional effects such as uh, you know, the motion blur to emphasize the movement. Uh, I added also clouds, layers of fog and dust. Um, I did general color adjustments and grading. Uh, I added the premiere crash effect uh, with the white screen and the error message. Uh, the shine effect when everything goes mad and there's the explosion. Uh, camera shake of course for this explosion. Uh, fine tuning a few details here and there and making it uh, as best as possible. Uh, when all of this was over, I started to export the whole animation from After Effects to Resolve. One of the most frustrating things with this intro was that I was never sure I would actually be able to technically finish the project. Um, I was worried there wouldn't be enough memory or CPU power to actually export it. Also, it was near impossible to have real-time previews, so I never got to see the result before the final render. And I can tell you that when the complete 4K export successfully finished rendering with zero issues after a night of rendering and I could finally play it and see the result, I was very happy because I could finally see some light at the end of the tunnel. Last but not least, sound design. Uh, although I am aware that most of you will watch my videos on a phone, uh, I like to spend a lot of time tweaking the sound and adding sound effects here and there. Uh, I think the sound is even more important than the visual effects and it really adds up to the whole experience. To create this, I imported the rendered After Effects video into Resolve and starting from there I used sound from various uh, libraries including Boom Library for instance. Uh, the cool thing with Resolve is that you can create a database with all your sound library. So here uh, I can just type a few keywords and boom I get all my sounds. Uh, here I used a few whooshes, wind effects, low whooshes, high whooshes, booms all around the place. Uh, if you have headphones or good speakers lying around, have a look at how the video looked like just with the sound effects. Also, I wasn't very satisfied with the original texture of my voice, so I kind of hacked it by uh, widening it using what we call uh, the Hass effect. Uh, I had this main voice track, uh, this mono track, to which I added a bit of reverb, and I had two copies of this exact same audio track below. Uh, one track was late by a few microseconds and panned all the way to the left, and the other was early by a couple of microseconds and panned all the way to the right channel. Uh, I also added a slight compressor and some EQ, and I like that. Um, it added a bit of depth and widening to the original voice. 
Uh, so after mixing everything, I basically went from this funny round trip from Premiere for editing and then Resolve for color grading to this color grading and then back into Premiere and then I stopped depressing. So as you can see, although the final result may look hard to make, if you break it down into small steps, uh, it isn't that complicated in the end. Uh, it just takes a bit of determination and patience. Of course, I am pretty confident that uh, the layering process I showed you with like 500 layers uh, is not optimized and probably not a good solution. Professional motion designers will probably pre-compose or use a node-based, uh, sorry, a node-based software instead of stacking 500 layers in the same composition. Um, I would be very happy to receive feedback from VFX artists on what I could improve here. Um, and for all of you who have little to zero experience in After Effects, I am curious to hear whether uh, you learned from something from this video, do you feel like you understood most of it, or I am talking gibberish? Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, this is it for today. I apologize for not making so much content. I wish I could stop time or go back in time sometimes to create infinite content here on this channel. Um, but yeah, it's not really possible. So anyways, thanks for watching, take care, and I hope to see you soon.